Dr. Lowell Gerber has also integrated wellness medicine into his practice. Let's listen to his thoughts. I practice in Freeport, Maine. I've been there for about two years. Um, I, my career started as an exercise physiology uh, graduate student working on a, actually a PhD and I was advised by my mentor that I would need a MD if I wanted to do research on human subjects and I told him thank you and went to medical school and never looked back. And after 30 years of uh, interventional cardiology, it was time to go to the cath lab and I decided to go back to my roots and learn um, how to take care of people more holistically. And uh, I've gone back and retrained in exercise physiology, metabolism, nutrition. And now I've learned that the um, endocrine system influences the cardiovascular system. And this is something that I really never received in training and it's very difficult to learn by reading. It's hard to sift through all the literature. And I discovered this course through my interest in learning how to take care of people as they age. And my specific reason for coming to these courses was to learn the influence of the endocrine system on specifically on the metabolic management of heart disease. It has benefited me by leading me to, I think, the scientific foundation of how the endocrine system affects cardiovascular disease and directly leading me to help my patients. And uh, a, a case in point is a patient I asked about today who's a woman in her 30s who's had several heart attacks already. And it's been unexplained. She's been to cardiologists at three different hospitals. And um, through this course, I've learned the questions to ask, the tests to obtain, to get to the root of what to treat this patient. And um, I think this st story will become amplified as I see other patients, patients whether they're younger or older, men or women, um, because this really is not known, um, or at least disseminated in, in the cardiology circles. It's very interesting, it's, it's almost black and white. Um, some patients, when I talk to them about the potential for treating them, um, are very, very interested and enthusiastic and happy to know that there are avenues which have never been explored by the other physicians. And there are some patients and some of my referring physicians, um, when I discuss these things with them, it's um, outside of their usual expectations and that's not what they've become expected to see or hear from another physician. Um, but there are some patients who are very, very delighted to know that there are other avenues that could result in improving their symptoms, having them live a, a longer, healthier life, and are very accepting of this. I try to um, first use diet and exercise, and I've spent considerable time learning about the metabolic management of heart disease and blood vessel disease and how the impact of exercise is, is important. That's the first line, uh, but then also I'm learning more about uh, deficiencies in diet and the environment and the food products and so there is a role for um, what I would call nutraceuticals or nutritional supplements that have sure. medicinal value and what I hope to learn from these courses is how to apply those particular products to particular needs of the patient rather than just give them a package of vitamins and canisters um, and a shotgun approach um, right. and I think one of the things that uh, Dr. Roser is very careful about is to show us how the particular antioxidants or particular vitamins um, play a role in a particular process. I think that's important, particularly now when everybody's worried about their finances and they want to get the most value for the money they spend on their health care. Right. I'm learning how to use compounding pharmacies through the process of taking these courses. Sure. And uh, it started out very simply with men and testosterone. Um, but now I'm trying to learn more about the intricacies of compounding thyroid, compounding for women, um, adrenal. These are things I've not had to deal with in a previous practice, so it's a learning experience and this course is very, very helpful as to how to interact with a compounding pharmacy. I think patients need to become more proactive and interested in their own health care. Uh, one of the things I've heard from Dr. Rousier and other physicians here is that when you start to provide care that's personalized to the individual patient that doesn't fit within the typical guidelines that you see in textbooks or from big organizations that there are some patients who are going to question 
what you're doing and then to be able to answer them in a confident way with a knowledge that you have the support and present which a course like this provides and also there are patients who want to know that we're not hurting them so some patients want to be helped and some patients just don't want to be hurt and I think that's something that patients need to become more accountable for themselves and ask those questions and again a course like this where Neil is so um, compulsive about providing the scientific background for the decisions we make so for I think people need to become more proactive more self-responsible for what they accept from a physician and the physician now needs to be more accountable to provide information that's sound and based on scientific principle and not um, a guideline that applies to many people but maybe none. In a time like this where people are concerned about their economic future um, and concerned about whether or not they can continue to work long enough to provide the life that they need after they retire, I think staying healthy and living healthier longer is an important alternative rather than just living longer. And I think that's the epitome of what this course provides for all of us.